a, a speedy recovery. Yes, definitely. Just been uh, giving uh, the administrator, Steph Bush, a little uh, little hug and some. Um, we were just exchanging some words. It was nice to see uh, the family, as yep. in the Ginetta family, all clubbing together there and uh, went and spoke to a couple of the drivers and just wished them my best. And they're going to get on with the race and uh, it's going to be a cracker. So let's uh, let's enjoy it. Yeah, good shout out for Steph. Always works hard behind the scenes. Doesn't, doesn't get a shout out very much, but uh, has a lot to deal with race weekends. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that job, to be no, honest. No. <laughs> and she does it well. Yeah, there's a, a lot going on, isn't there, in uh, in any kind of uh, in any kind of racing? Well, there you go. That's the race from uh, previous, and uh, I, I must I must admit that uh, that they I mean it doesn't look that bad, does it? That they'll break broken bits on a Porsche, but it's probably. I mean, they can send you the bill to deal with them. Yeah, I'll sort <laughs> it out. Hey, listen, I'm, I'll sponsor anyone, me, any of those drivers that need a new bonnet. It's probably about fifty million quid in it for a new race car bonnet on a car these days. It's um, yeah. It's, it's been an interesting day, isn't it, with uh, with with what's been going on? But um, I've got to say that the professionalism of uh, the races that have taken, you know, uh, that have gone ahead, and the drivers and how they get themselves focused again, always reminds me of how um, how different some drivers are to uh, to 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 other people who do maybe mundane and normal jobs. Very focused individuals, and it's it's good to see that. It is absolutely brilliant to see it. And same with race control, absolutely superb work all round. And uh, this is the same round, by the way, as the one we were seeing earlier on. So there, there was scheduled to be a reverse grid race or partially reverse grid race. I understand if, we, if they can have the time and rearrange the timetable, we might see that on perhaps on the Saturday at Silverstone. Yes, that's what I was hearing yep. whispers of as well. So let's see what happens with that. But uh, it's time for the grid. Let's have a look at how they line up, and it is going to be James Kellett on pole position from Tom Empson, then Aston Miller and Darren Leung, who is the G56 amateur pole man. Then we get into the, the 55s, the mainstay of the championship over the last few years. Luke Reed on pole there from Blake Anglis. Wes Pierce is next, back in the 56s, the amateur class. Connor Garlick is uh, third in the 55 pros, and he's followed by James Taylor. Dan Morris, the leader of the G55 amateur class, ahead of James Townsend. Then Luke War on row six. And the grid's completed by uh, the man who carries our onboard camera this weekend, Ian Duggan. Ian, the class championship leader, got a, a good lead, 19 points over Dan Morris. Morris will be looking to try and take some points out of that. And Ian Duggan finding himself a little bit further back than he would like to be at the moment. And uh, Duggan qualified, uh, let's say, a bit, it was second in the first race of the weekend in class behind Dan Morris. So Morris is doing the job of chipping away at the number eight car, the man from Hockley. In Essex running with Fox Motorsport, 48 years of age, the man uh, with the camera in the car. Thankfully unfazed about having the, the camera as well. I know we mentioned in the past that it's not something that some drivers want. Although, <laughs> actually, having said that, Blake Anglis, who got disqualified from a race at Snetterton, Little cheeky, I can't remember if I said this last time, but actually sent me a message and said, oh, I'm going to be off the back, so can I have the onboard? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did tell me yeah, about play, that. You know, yeah, to, yeah. To trying to, uh, you know, think he'll be sponsors and the coverage and everything else, but I don't think you can really give a, an onboard camera as a reward to somebody who got a DQ, really. No, it's, no it's it doesn't work like that. <laughs> but Ian Duggan, who were on board with the number eight, I'd just seen it. I went into the into the collector area just to see the, the boys and girls, obviously, we, we know them quite well. I went up to Ian and I was like, uh, you're happy to have the camera? And he was like, yeah, 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 it's all good. I said, uh, we've been told to bleep you out because you uh, you do love an expletive, my friend. So if you hear anything to, uh, not so nice over the over that screaming V6. <laughs> How did he tell you to go away, by the way? <laughs> On your way, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ian, hopefully give us some action. So. Uh, class championship lead is off the back of the grid, so hopefully some progress for us to watch on board with the G55. Uh, Ian ran in GT Cup last few seasons, so this is uh, a maiden season for him of running on his own, uh, as opposed to having driver sharing. All set and ready to go. Take two for our Ginettas. Out go the lights and away from the line. It's a good start from James Kelly, but we've got a staller on the grid. Thankfully, everybody missing them. It's Epson chasing Kellett down into turn one. Bit of a bun fight on for third place, but Kellett's made a great start once again. Yeah, it was Millar, I think, that was yeah. left on the grid, wasn't it? But uh, Kellett, great start. Will he have an attack launched at him again by Emson? Well, we're going to see about that, but in the background, there's a little spin round, isn't there? So, that's yeah. Morris, that's Dan Morris. Oh, it is Dan Morris, yeah. yeah. 
So, Dan, challenging, or was going to be challenging for the championship lead and certainly isn't going to be doing so now as we watch Ian Duggan trying to come through and pass Luke Waugh. Yeah, they, especially at this time of the year and uh, this time of the day, sorry, dusty circuit. We've seen it's been a bit dirty today, so this is the first time they've really powered through. And this is always where James Kelly gets away, a little bit of brakes into church and gets the car to be pinned out of there. But he won't be happy with how close Tom Empson is. We've got a race on. You see Tom Empson, he's about eight foot now, isn't he? Oh, Luke oh, Moore. Well, that is a shame. Left rear has broken on that car. Yeah, Luke Wall's been a mainstay of the supporting championships of the BTCC over the years. Came in racing Clio's, and uh, the Clio's disappeared, now coming into Ginetto. It's a shame for that breakage for him, he's uh, very consistent, Luke. Yeah. Talking about consistency, I can see Emerson is just trying to stay with the race leader, James Kellett, and uh, yeah, it's going to be one to watch. Millar goes through in the DTO car, so that's the car that stopped on the grid, didn't really get away. Replay the start, the car in the middle of your picture, P3, the DTO black and white car, the red lights go on, they... Oh, he got a launch. He got a launch. And look how fast their marshals were out there with that yellow flag. Luke and, Reed did well to avoid him. That was oh, a very Luke, quick reaction. Luke really must have... Look, and again, it, it goes, and then with the launch control that they have on these cars, a couple of the guys are just struggling. If, they, if the wheels grip up, they, they, they struggle and stall, so he was very lucky. Ian Duggan, our on-board guy, he would have seen this very late. Let's see what he gets, and let's see where these yellow flags come out. Look at that, straight away straight away and yeah that was uh, glad to see that that went uh, that went okay that did and Aston Miller's already cleared these boys on his recovery unbelievable fair play <laughs> to him so we're going to stay on board with Ian Duggan on, in the number eight so what happens Luke Wall there with the left rear problem that we've seen him pull up with he's number 11 on your right hand side we're probably side by side we're not past him he loses his brakes ah oh, oh. so he was he was trying to escape the contact wasn't he with, was it Morris that was stopped backwards at Campbell Cobb Seagrave? And then there, and then you can just see he goes then, so his uh, his left rear had, um, had departed the race by then, so... That's interesting, that was a very interesting line through Allard from one of the G56 cars. Yeah. Oh, here we go, there's Luke, Luke Wall there, just um, middle of the grass and... Uh, yeah, that's not the way. That was unfortunate, that. That was nobody's fault, really. He was just trying to get out the way of another accident. So, yeah, so status quo. And uh, Kelly is just managing this by the looks of it. But you never know, Emerson might just turn the wick up and have a proper go at this. Yeah, because the other drivers are, are, are very much learning it. And you know, James Kelly has had a lot of time in Janetta, not necessarily with the V8 over the seasons, running in the, the 55 with Alex Stevenson in GT Cup. And they've been very, very successful in that championship. Oh, Emson kicks up the dirt there, the moment for him, chasing hard, Kellett still with the fastest lap. Emson, that's how hard, look how clear these guys are ahead of Darren Leung in third place. Where is Darren? He's, he's virtually half the length of the straight behind. Yeah, and uh, uh, that, was a, that was a big, scary moment through Church. A lot of understeer. I was watching how far they braked into the apex of Church, and Kellett was on the brakes, off the brakes, throttle up. And Emson, to be fair, was braking quite hard for a longer time, got to the apex, but the car still drifted wide and, uh, and ran up there. But he's not letting him get away here, and this is good to see that Emson ain't going to roll over. He wants this. Uh, Kellett's listening to my advice. I spoke to him at the start of the first race. I said, don't go out of shot because you won't be on the camera. <laughs> Listen, good lad. <laughs> well, Darren Young's got a, a, a rear mirror now, isn't he? Full of Millar, who made that, uh, that aborted start, but then got going again. He was lucky to get the car fired up and gone again, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, Darren's got a real handful of a problem now to try and keep on to this P3. Remember, he's an am, so Darren uh, still defending, as he's right to do. And Darren has been so impressive. Uh, like we've said before, he's done hardly any racing, and this boy can pedal. But look how much speed now that uh, Millar can take through Goodwood now into church a little bit on the brakes and then you can see the difference in different lines as well it looked like a really different way to approach that corner absolutely right Miller busy trying to close in points wise it might no effect on his points if he, if he goes up into third position but uh he'll want to try and have a nibble if there's a safety car he might get the chance to just close in on Emson and Kelly out front Miller appropriately with the CWS logo on the front for Colin White you see there uh, yeah. 
Interesting stuff. Look at this, though. No chance of uh, Kelly getting away. Maybe managing it. But uh, oh, this was the this was the understeery grassy moment for uh, for Tom Emerson. It's so easy to do that. These cars don't have the best aero at the front, so they really struggle to be pushed down to the floor. So there's a real interesting way of driving these new G56s compared to the the V6 55 cars in the in the slower category. It's been the, the sound alone is worth coming to the racetrack for in these V8s for sure. Let's have a look what we've got here. So this is Millar going through, gets the inside on Darren Leung. Millar through. I'll tell you what, we're very nearly in the same scenario. I say he was, Paul Leung was going to have a go back there. Similar scenario to yesterday with Luke Reed now busy chasing Darren Leung. And Luke was, his dad Alex were joking yesterday that Darren was holding them up yesterday and they got passed by Blake Anglis while they were trying to deal with Darren but Darren looks at us have a little bit more pace in this one than he did yesterday. Yeah it does look that way and I think maybe his mindset then was to just let let uh, Millar go and probably just try and stay with him and uh, pull him away from the rest of the pack so yeah but this unless Kelly is really managing this I don't understand what's going on because it looks like Emson's giving him a go and that's a proper go that is. Yeah, uh, the uh, centre Connor Garlic and uh, James Taylor having a good battle here. James Taylor, winner of the Team Hard Scholarship. Connor Garlic, another driver who's come up through the Genesis Scholarship route as well, and then raced a little bit in challenge. One from Simula 55. Mum and Dad telling me yesterday that his his brother is about to join the fray as well, so he might be racing that in two driver championships. Very nice. That's a good thing about these cars. You can you can run them in a lot of championships. Endurance, British GT. On board with Duggan has a lift back on the throttle, you run as far and as close as you can to that white line. And now as you come up to combo, see how he runs wide and then comes back to straighten up. That's to get a, a break in, in a, a break position in a straight line to get through Campbell, now into Cobb. Don't hit the curbs here. Bit of a lift on the throttle to get the nose in. And that is a bit of a dusty moment there, isn't it? I think Millar's gone dusty again in P2. He's had a proper go. Emson. Oh, sorry, yeah, Emson. Sorry, Emson. Yeah, that's all right. I was just looking through the classes as well, and uh, this is the overall one. Oh, and it's still hanging there, isn't it, that cloud? Yeah, that's not uh, that's not really what you want to come across because uh, you're looking for a yellow flag as soon as you see that dust, and that's got a bit of damage on the front left, isn't it? Doesn't look happy, does it? I think I think this I think he's rattled across the grass. He's got a broken windscreen. That's him finished. Got to be finished. He must have gone off so far because he's rattled the front of the car so hard. They... Oh, stones in the back. That's going to be wow. stones from from uh, Kelly's car, isn't it? But look at the windscreen. The windscreen is destroyed. Looks like it's been in a in a gunfight. Look at the state of that. That car has to come in. That cannot carry on that car. He can't see. Look, he's slowed down. He's slowed right down. He can't see. That's so unfortunate. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look to see if black and orange is being prepared. I think they will do when they get to assess that situation with six minutes on the clock. So Kelly must have been a, a, a big stone kicked up by Kelly. Well, yeah, I mean, well, it, no, it looks like a lot of stones or a lot of something because... Kelly did pick, kick up a lot of dust, didn't he? It kicked up a lot of dust, but um, I'm so surprised. Look, it smashed the, it smashed the, uh, the front the left headlight as well. That's unreal. So one more look at it. So watch, it's actually two things. It's the dust and the stones kicked up by Kelly. And the bump. But, and, and that's why, and that's why, as a driver, you should always have a, a full-face helmet in a tin-top car with your visor down. Yeah. I, I tell a lot of the youngsters this when I'm coaching them, that you never know what's going to come through that windscreen. They're, they're stronger than a road car windscreen. Um, they can be, in the touring cars, they're like a, 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 a very heavy-duty plastic with, with a heating element inside it and they're expensive they're a few grand and uh, there's no way that you can see that it's laminated it's not um you know that it's not going to just smash like a road car one would that was a massive massive moment that i'm surprised he's still going but he just needs to stroke it home he wants the p2 he wants the points yeah. he? if he could do so safely without uh, you know risking himself then the officials will look at it for sure they've obviously made the decision that all is okay whereas pierce goes through blake anglis down behind him similar livery to james kelly but the 55 uh, it's G55 in the 84 car. That's Blake Anglis who won yesterday's class with a, a great move around Noble on Luke Reed. And Luke Reed, ever the sport, straight across in Park Fermi, shook hands, said, Well done. Great sporting stuff. And this is what the guys were, were coping with yesterday. You've got a 55 chasing the 56 of Wes Pierce. Remember, Wes was the outside, the outright winner at Knock Hill Circuit after we had all those problems for the other drivers and the DQ for the, uh, the uh, man winning this one, James Kellett. And here he is here. 
a moment. Pierce, second position in the Amcross. Darren Leon winning the G56 AMS. And I've got to say, Blake Anglis is kind of where Luke Reed was yesterday, struggling to, to try and make the pass on the 56. Yeah, and it's a difficult one, but that just shows you how good the older G55 is. The V6 yeah. car is, is such a fantastic car, massive development over the years. I've driven that car, it's fantastic. I've not driven the new 56, but I'm told it's just an absolute beast and a beauty to drive. Did you go then? I am due a go, yeah. I wouldn't want to have a go at that one, though. <laughs> Not as it is at the moment. <laughs> I can't believe that windscreen. That's unbelievable. Oh, Dan Morris getting stuck in there. And that's our onboard, isn't it, as well? It is. It's Ian Duggan that he was muscling. So I think we might be able to get a, a replay of that one. Those two, very physical. That's the top two in the 55 amp class, Paul. Big problems, though. Look at that. It's the smoke coming from the front right of Morris. He's got a puncture, is he? Oh, he's going to go he off has. if he doesn't slow down because that's broken. That wheel's broken. Uh, Dan would have picked that up. He has, yeah, he's picked that up. He knows what's happening. He's going to go to safety. Yeah. Dan realised that. Punctured. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. That They've obviously had big side, side, side to side contact into the chicane. So Morris breaking late. Ah, oh, locks up. Thinks, oh, right, well, I'm, I'm on now. Has a go. Oh, which. Well, side by side is a difficult one, Matt, when you go through there side by side, but um, just needed to be a bit more room between the drivers, obviously, and uh, you could hear that metallic noise, I think, where the, the tyre and the wheel come together. Let's have a listen, Ian Duggan on board. Does he just get round the outside? Oh, they could have given each other a bit, uh, they yeah. could have given each other a bit more room, because that, that was... He didn't really mean to do that move around the outside. He, he locked up a brake and was persuaded into it by his car. They will shake hands and have tea after the meeting, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but look at this now, watch him yeah. come. So you can see, that's as soon as he starts to turn left, he realises he didn't know. Okay. He didn't know, he would have felt the vibration, but that could be anything. Lucky he wasn't alongside there, and Ian didn't go and have a look at the outside of him. But yeah, that's a shame, yeah. that's just side-to-side -side contact. and. Uh, and uh, a puncher situation, so well out the way though, so fair play mate, you knew there was something wrong and you were gone out the way. Duggan's been so consistent, hasn't come through, yes he has come through now and uh, he's going to be on for second place. James Townsend missed the consistency as well, looking for a second 55 amateur class win of the season. There is Dan, the uh, electrician from the Midlands and uh, oh. good lad. Oh. How, how, far, how far is Millar behind Emson then? Nine tenths on the last lap. Well, he's going to pass him then, isn't he? Yeah, looks like he's closing in. Oh, he's, got, he's passed him. He's got him, yeah, he's got yeah, him. Yeah, he's passed him, isn't he? That is something else, that, isn't it? That that car, it, it literally, literally looks like that wide again. I mean, oh, it's touch and go that whether or not, for me, <laughs> that car. If anything else hit that windscreen, I wouldn't want to be in it. Now, we get pages and pages of information from Simon Pace, the Janetta PR guru. So we've had that change for second. And the thing I'm thinking about now is I've got a feeling this might be one of the biggest winning margins we've had in Super Cup. It's 12 seconds, Kellett to Millar. And I haven't got all the paperwork, but I, just to give a bit but, of respect there. So. But it's not even the longest race we've ever had. No, it is a real short one, given isn't the, it? The, yeah, yeah. 1.33 on the clock. So another dominant performance from Kellett. Hard lines to Emerson, that's a shame. Good to see Millar, though, having a strong race after that, that start. I'm just wondering if he's still struggling with the launch control on it. Yeah, it's... Uh... Oh, they look like tricky cars to drive, don't they, with all that power? They look so rewarding. Anyone I speak to about them, they just say that it's just so powerful. You just you just don't want to energise those rear tyres. And uh, and that's Kellett, isn't it? Just lapping uh, Ian Duggan there. So Ian's still going. I mean, why is Kellett pushing on so hard? He's kicking up <laughs> dust as well. That just shows you how dirty the circuit is, because he's probably going at eight tenths, and it's still running out wide. It looked like that yesterday, or maybe nine tenths, and he was just so controlled through the... Beautiful to watch through the chicane yesterday. It's like watching a... When you watch him, he drives that car like an ice skater. It's proper. So change for second. Good analogy. Here we go. Yeah, so that was... He just couldn't get the thing to end in Emerson. He just wants the points, like you say. But, yeah, you can just see, just like... You know how ice skaters skating on the ice, they just turn and glide, and the car doesn't look like it's got too much energy going through it, and that's what Kellett, that number six, looks like to me. This is super special, coming into church. Torval and Dean, not Orville and Keith Harris. <laughs> Is that the puppet? It's like me and you, I'm the Muppet, <laughs> they're the puppet. <laughs> so James Kellett there, the clock is ticking down, he's going to grab yet another win in his quest for the championship. It's his win number 11, he'll run out of fingers, wouldn't he, to be able to signify when he goes across the line or comes into the 
uh, Park Ferme area, but comes through the chicane in front of the huge crowd. You can see it absolutely packed in the grandstands, and James Kellett takes the checker flag, win number 11, Aston Millar will get after a difficult start. I tell you what, he'll take that P2. Empson with the damage will take P3 as well. Good damage limitation for him. Across the line goes Ian Duggan to collect second in 55 and 11th overall. The podium will be completed by Tom Empson. Darren Luger is going to win the amateur class of the 56s and take fourth position overall. And it's another class win for Luke Reed. There is Luke ahead of Wes Pierce. Blake Angley second in 55 Pro again. The 55 Pro class continues to entertain and enthrall. Good stuff from them. Connor Garlic picks up another podium in 55 Pro as well, ahead of James Taylor. But who can stop James Kelly? Well, it's a very good question. And uh, again, just when I thought someone was going to launch an attack, it couldn't quite be uh, pulled off, could it? And uh, Emson looked like he was he was going to have it, to be fair. He was going to give him a good fight. But I've uh, got to say, so impressive from Kelly. So, so impressive. But shout to uh, Millar as well with uh, that CWS logo on the front of his car nice little touch that boy nice that's proper it is isn't it good lads as you said he's very much the uh, Janetta family and uh, once again to reiterate wish Colin and Mike well here's how they finished in round 13 of the Miller's Oils Janetta GT4 Then it's Tom Empson in third, Henry Dawes, ho hopefully he'll be back with us at uh, Silverstone, he's in fourth. The 56 amateurs, still headed by Wes Pierce, but Darren Young is closing in. Time then for a quick cup of tea and a bicky. We'll be back with a word with James Kelly in just a couple of moments. Please stay with us. Ginetta GT4 Super Cup racing again after the big crash earlier in the day. James Kelly, championship leader, stormed away. Kellett's dust literally blew away his challenger, Tom Empson. Windscreen damage from that moment. It was the end of Empson's challenge. Others found their own way round, but James Kellett storming the Ginetta GT4 Championship, a race win by a huge margin. And he is standing by to talk with Louise. James, 